You know those whispers, hints, rumors, almost to the point of being urban legends of an awesome kick-ass remake? This is one of those rarities. and welcome back to my Evil Dead film series review. So sorry I'm late with this. I've had a rough couple past two, three days. I had to deal with some personal issues, which I won't get into here, but it was pretty rough. But I'm back now, so let's do this. We are at the 2013 remake of Evil Dead. And for those of you who have not followed yet, you can find that I did the reviews for Evil Dead Evil Dead 2 and Army of Darkness, which you'll find in the description below. I've covered all of them up to this point, and I will be covering Rise really soon, which is already playing in theaters, followed by a ranking of all five films, so look out for that. Thank you so much, guys, for clicking here. I really do appreciate it. So the film follows a group of friends who go to this cabin in the woods to help their friend battle her addiction while coming across an evil book that unleashes evil forces. This one, the 2013 remake, has been my most favorite out of all of them. I'm going to go ahead and say it. Even over the original. Even though I gave that one a positive review, this one is by far a little bit better. This is one of the very few times that I can honestly say a remake was actually done right, was actually done perfectly. That's a rarity. And again, I'll say it, better than the original. Don't all stone me at once. But was this an actual perfect remake or am I overselling this just a little bit? Let's find out and start off with the positives for Evil Dead. And do I think I'm overselling this? No, I don't think I am. This is by far the best out of all the remakes in my life that I have ever seen. This is one of those that should have been on a pedestal as an example to other filmmakers that has made remakes of other franchises that unfortunately has not stuck. It should have been a redefiance of that term, of the remake term. It's a perfect remake. It's everything that everybody should have been doing, regardless of whatever franchise anybody else was making. Just a perfect lesson on how it should have been done. It felt proper. It's what the remake stamp should have always been. It didn't feel cheap. It didn't feel like a cash grab. It wasn't this cop-out like most remakes are or were. It felt like a true genuine remake. It's like they actually gave a crap. Director Fede Alvarez really knew what he was doing and he put a lot of his heart and soul into this. And you can definitely tell. He really did put a lot in this film. Started with the story, which was great. It's about this girl who has this addiction and her friends just tries to help her overcome it. That alone is really sympathetic because that's a real problem, you know, in the real world. And it just, this girl who tries to overcome her addiction and her friends just tries to help her out with it. Though, you know, crap hits the fan later on, still, their hearts was in a good place. And uh, for a story like this, for a horror film, that really kind of you know, gets to me. It gets to you. It wasn't just about these teens hooking up and getting killed. You know, hooking up in this cabin in the woods and getting killed, which is the basic horror movie trope. It wasn't just that. It had an actual, real, emotional storyline connection. An actual, plausible reason as to why the characters are in the situation that they are in in the film. Which made the characters feel really real. They didn't feel like cliches. They didn't feel like these stereotypes. They all felt like they served a purpose because of the story and because of the direction that this particular film was going in with this girl trying to overpower and overcome her addiction. Speaking of, Jane Levi, who plays our main girl, was actually pretty terrific. She plays a girl named Mia, the girl that has this addiction and that her friends is trying to help her out and she's like the first one that gets possessed. And it's funny, she kind of plays like the, the replacement of the sister of Ash from the original because she's the one that gets locked up in the basement throughout half the runtime. I thought she did a really good job in this. She showed good, true emotions, especially before she hit the fan and she got possessed into this crazy ass monster. <laughs> understand there was something in the woods david 
Jay Lamar, she definitely has her moments. She has, definitely has her creepy vibe moments, especially after what happens to her happens to her in the forest, which is actually another hats off to what happened to the sister character in the original. So she definitely has her moments. She definitely has her, you know, just creepy, just all out wacko moments before shit actually hits the fan. But before all that, she's just somebody that you can very much sympathize with. You can sympathize with her character because she has this addiction, she has to battle it, and she tries to get a handle on it. I mean, not only is she battling with these flesh-eating demons, especially the one that pretty much attaches itself to her later on in the film, but her own personal demons as well. I find that to be a very great character arc and just something that you can really empathize with and really connect with. And that's what makes this character in this film really likable, even though she's stuck in the basement throughout half the runtime as this creature. Still, the whole setup thing with this character, it really gets to you. And it really sets up something that, like, even though this tragic thing happens to her, you still want her to make it. You know, even though she acts crazy and evil, you still want her to make it. The way that they set this character up in the beginning, in the first act, it just makes you really care for her on the spot. And Jay Levi, she really pulls that off. She executes everything in this movie pretty well. The look and feel of this film was really cool. You get that sense of dread. It's something that makes you feel very unnerved. Like with the way everything looks in this movie, it has sort of a mixture of goth while being really dark at the same time. The film just does a really good job of making you feel unnerved. It does a really good job of hooking you in because of that reason alone and just the overall tone. Just the way the cinematography looked and this it just really gets to you because it just the way that it looked and just that dark feeling that it gives out that dark vibe that it gives out to where as soon as things goes down it never lets up it never misses a beat and just another reminder of how well this remake was actually done and how much effort it was put into it and the reason why i can say that this is a perfect remake it didn't feel like a cash cow it didn't feel rushed. It felt genuine. It just never felt like your typical cliche remake in the 10 years since this has been released. How it was perfectly handled and how everything from the beginning, middle to end. Again, it's a perfect example of how a remake should be. I'm always going to stand my ground on that. I mean, until the day I die, I'm always going to stand my ground on that. And who knows, maybe another remake will come out that'll make me feel as good as I did in this. Who knows? I'm hoping. <laughs> the creature effects looked really good. I mean, even better than the first. Again, don't all stone me at once. But the way they made the creatures look, the way their eyes and the contact lenses and the makeup effects, and just the way they looked, the way that people looked after they got possessed, it was executed very, very cool. To the point to where they almost looked zombified. Again, I know there was plenty of people that looked the same way in the Sam Raimi films. But still, for a remake and a retelling, it was actually done really well for the type of atmosphere that this movie had was shown. Once again, proving my point of how great this remake is. And of course, you got the drone shots. The thing that I always talk about at nauseum in this series that I know this franchise for. One really cool shot that pertains to that happens before the main character, before Jane Levi's character gets possessed, to where it rolls up to the cabin and it busts through the door and she starts screaming and you hear something in the back that's actually from the original. It's the line that the sister actually says at the beginning of the original film. You can hear it as plain as day. And then, like, as she's screaming, and then that's when she says, you're all going to die tonight. And I thought that was just epic within itself. That's, like, one of the many things, one of the many reasons, one of the many scenes in this movie, a reason that made me feel the way I did in this, that just made it so epic, you know, just compared to the others. 
But as soon as that happened, it really makes you realize, okay, this movie isn't playing around. Not anymore. Not that it was, but still. <laughs> You're all going to die tonight. Just certain scenes like that just really made my jaw drop. Even to this day with rewatches. Just that overwhelmingly epic feel. And the movie has a way of doing that every time. So much so that I found myself doing this the whole time. <coughs> Sorry. Now I can honestly say I have already reviewed the new Evil Dead Rise film. I have it filmed, I just hadn't uploaded it yet because I have to get this one out first, obviously, for this film series review. So I'm gonna try not to sound too contradicting pertaining to the gore that I did in that review, since I've already reviewed that film, the newest one. But the gore in the Evil Dead 2013 remake was spot on. This one, I can honestly say, ramped it up to a 10. Before this movie came out, 10 years ago, before this entry came out, it, yes, yes, the series had its share, its, its fair share of blood and gore and kills, but when it got to this one, they definitely ramped up. They definitely held nothing back. And again, this is me knowing that I've already reviewed the new one, which you'll definitely see that soon, but I'll just put it this way. Before this film came out 10 years ago, I wouldn't have thought it had gone as hardcore as it did. None of the others in the franchise topped this one. This one has had got to be possibly the goriest one in the franchise. Now, I will say, after having reviewed the new one, seen the new one, and reviewed the new one, I will say this, and you will hear it again in the review for the new one, but there's definitely a bunch of cringe-worthy scenes that almost to the point that made me kind of turn away, but only for a split second. There was plenty of carnage candy, there was plenty of moments like that, and I don't turn away easily. I, I can take a lot, but there were certain things in this entry that really kind of made me turn my head just for a split second. Some pretty gnarly, cringe-worthy scenes that really happens for me nowadays in horror films. Some pretty gnarly kills, some that really stood out, like there's this one where this woman chops her arm off or saws her arm off with one of those meat saws. She does it so slowly after her, her hand gets possessed, she does it so slowly that it just kind of made me do this just a little bit. And then there's a nail gun to the face scene, which was pretty gnarly within itself. She just kept on sticking those nails in her head, right? Like... Obviously she was possessed, so she just kept on sticking those nails in her head and just, you know, kept on and on it. It's just every time this movie piled on, it piles on even more. And then there's this other bloody scene where this girl was carving her face up, and you know, one of her cheeks, almost to the point to where you could see her teeth through her cheeks. That was pretty gnarly, and uh, you know, just little moments like that just really got to me and you know even in rewatches I was like eh. I remember going with my best friend at the time when this was in theaters and she, like she couldn't even like she was like oh what is she doing and like I was watching the whole time but it's just mo little moments like that that just really gets to you that makes this movie really stand out from the rest of them up to this point it was just insane I loved it and by the time that they got and then by the time that they got to the final act, you know, certain things happen that, you know, kind of surprises you, especially dealing with the Mia character. And then the whole final confrontation between her and this demon that rises up. All the while, the sky is like raining blood. It's like literally raining blood that was kind of foreshadowed and foretold earlier on in the film. That was tense within itself. You just get this whole scene where she tries to fight this thing off and she gets the saw and her hand gets torn off and it's just all these crazy things that just piled on even more to that epic feeling that I always get when watching this film especially in that final act and that final confrontation between the Mia character and this demon entity that was just chasing her around. <laughs> Ah! 
and her trying to survive all this. Everything was just going on that was just so tense and you just couldn't look away for a, for a split second. Not even a split split second, but probably like a half a second of a second. It's just very well executed and this, this film just went all out and it just didn't miss a beat at all. When it comes to this entry, I can honestly say it really holds up. It has and always will be the coolest addition to the franchise and deserves to be on a pedestal. Evil Dead 2013 remake, what was your thoughts on it? Were you a fan of this entry? You think that this was the coolest remake ever? You think this is the best that this franchise can offer? Or was this not for you? Do you think Evil Dead Rise was better over any of the others? Leave me a comment down below and give me your thoughts. Thank you so much guys once again for watching this. I really do appreciate it. Like, subscribe, comment, and share. And make sure to click that bell icon so you don't miss a thing. And I will see you on the next one. Peace.